Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. This is professional real estate investor David Campbell and it is my pleasure to have one of my top advisors and friends uh, on today's call, uh, Jeff Lerman. Hello David, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Jeff. We've come a long way together and I really appreciate your mentorship over almost uh, a decade. We've been, uh, been learning from you for a very long time. Yep, it has been a long time. It's been my pleasure to uh, to be involved with you both, just to watch your growth and uh, your success. And also, uh, I appreciate very much the friendship with you and your and your lovely family. It's always nice to. Uh, it's a business, but at the same time, it's all about relationships, and this is a relationship that means a lot to me. Thanks. I am very honored to be doing the topic of partnering for profit with Jeff particularly because he has been so influential in my life and my ability to develop partnerships. And uh, Jeff has encouraged me to tell my story and really starting from uh, you know where uh, pretty humble build beginnings to a, a great success through real estate. So let's get started. A little bit about myself. When I met Jeff Lerman, I was a public school teacher. I was teaching high school band. And through a series of very fortunate real estate uh, moves, I became a self-made multi-millionaire. And self-made is really um, kind of an elusive term because I could not have done it by myself. I really needed the help of uh, strategic partners and strategic advisors and mentors. And I'm very grateful for those people who have mentored me through the process and partnered with me through the process. And that's really the theme of today's talk is how do you go from where you are now to farther down that financial path through using partners? Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Jeff for a very long time. He's one of the smartest people I know. He's also really warm and friendly if you're on your side, if you're on his side of the table. But if you ever need someone to litigate for you, it's so nice to have uh, someone who can be a powerhouse uh, in the courtroom, but also uh, a very kind-hearted uh, person in the uh, in uh, on your side of the table, uh, working for you, being an advocate for you. Uh, Jeff's a former uh, president of the Marin County Bar Association and uh, very, very uh, experienced real estate investor and real estate syndicator in his own right. And Jeff, being the attorney on the call, I'd love for you to uh, you know, open with our disclaimer. Sure, that's important. Uh, this, this educational seminar is not a substitute for getting your own legal advice. The webinar is offered with the understanding that the speakers are not offering legal or other professional advice. Any actions with regard to the information contained in the seminar should be undertaken only upon the advice and counsel of competent legal and tax professionals. Receiving this information does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and the speaker. And that's our long-winded formal disclaimer uh, but just to try to put it in plain English, uh, I am not your lawyer, David's not your advisor, at least not yet, and just because you are listening to this call and receiving this information doesn't mean you can come back and sue us for what we talk about during this call. This is a starting point for your education on these points, and the next step for you is if you hear and see something here that resonates with you and something that you want to follow up on, then your next step is to go ahead and start working with a lawyer, I hope it's me, uh, and uh, an advisor like David, if not David, but I, uh, I think that you couldn't go wrong working with David. Uh, he's got a unique skill set. Uh, one of the reasons that he's my uh, one of my star clients is because, uh, you're going to hear his story in a minute, uh, he has really uh, got a natural intuition and good business sense for creative deal structuring and that can translate that, that can really I know it's an overused cliche but that can really be priceless it can translate into millions of dollars and that is a gift um, some people have it most people don't David uh, does have it and uh, when you stick around to the end of this call you're going to hear about a unique opportunity for you to get um, your own personal sampling of that gift um, in, in a very unique way. Uh, 
So uh, with that, David, why don't you pick it up and talk about some of the main teaching points today and tell everybody a little bit about the story because I think it really is an important story, not just for people to understand why they should listen to you, but also to understand the power of this particular strategy for taking you from where you are today to where you want to be. This is a great uh, introduction, Jeff. Thank you. I'm very humbled and, and honored for your kind kind words. So one of the things that I teach my investor clients is that the return on investment is not just how much money you made on the deal, but how much money you made as a reflection of the time invested, the money invested, and the hassle involved. And we all want to get more profit with less invested. And that's why you're on today's call is trying to find shortcuts for a, an easier path to get to where you want to go. And working with advisors like Jeff and myself, we can really help you avoid some of those pitfalls that are full of hassle. You, you might find a great deal that could make you a bunch of money, but if it drains the life energy out of you in the process, it may or may not be uh, worth that kind of uh, return in the end. So today's uh, points, we're really talking about um, how to develop relationships with strategic partners, why you need partners, how to cultivate those relationships, how to really take advantage of today's buying market when you don't have all the resources that you need to be successful, right? A deal needs lots of resources, but you don't need to have them all. You just need to assemble a team that has them all. And being on this call is a great opportunity to assemble those. Uh, that team. And as Jeff said, we've got a very special invitation for you uh, at the end of our call today to really help you take the ideas that you've learned today and formulate them into a plan of action. Really, uh, this is a kind of an, a great introduction to the concept, but when you're ready to go and actually start using partnerships to make, uh, create financial independence for yourself, you're going to want a little bit more and we're happy to help you uh, make that happen. So here's a little bit of my story. I really was a high school band director making about $37,000 a year in California. That was uh, qualified me for uh, low income assistance. And I thought, this is really not it. You're right. I didn't study this hard, work this hard uh, to be considered low income. You know, very educated person and uh, struggling to make ends meet. So I really started looking at how do I get ahead in life? And I picked a vehicle of real estate to do that. You know, fortunately, uh, when I started buying real estate, the market was on fire, right? I bought a, a condo in Orange County in 2000. I bought it for 137. I sold it two years later for 197. Suddenly, I went from making $37,000 a year as a band director to making $60,000 of net worth and liquidity in two years, right? I had zero money in my savings account from teaching, but I had $60,000 in my bank account from uh, a real estate investment. And this is my primary residence that I lived in one half. I rented out the other half. And so I said, great, I've got a little bit of seed capital. What do I do next? And I had this brilliant idea that I would go buy or build a self-service car wash. I just thought that was the great idea. People wash their cars, they put their quarters in the thing and passive income, that's what I wanted, passive income. So I shared this idea with my, uh, uh, so I went out looking for a piece of property to, uh, to put this car wash on. I went out to Lake Elsinore where they have lots of boats and lots of RVs and I found this piece of land and it was $200,000. The seller would carry some financing for me. All I needed was a $40,000 down payment and about $100,000 of equity to build my car wash. And I had a little bit of money to put in the deal, but I was short. I was short by almost $80,000. And I didn't really know how to develop anything. I was a band director and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I saw an opportunity. I found this piece of land on the freeway in Southern California, 200 grand. And a funny thing happened is I started sharing my story with people, what I wanted to do. And what I thought is, you know, we buy this and we're going to become rich. And what my wife thought was, you're going to buy this and we're going to be counting quarters for the rest of our life and changing soap. And I didn't really understand how to sell 
the opportunity. And uh, so what was interesting is I, I started doing more due diligence on this piece of land. And what I realized is that all around this property, there was nothing. There was nothing there, a bunch of dirt, which is why it was cheap. But I went to the city council and I learned that this property was in the path of progress. I learned that a lot of development was planned for this parcel. And the person that owned this dirt um, didn't know about it. This information was you know, it was known by the city council and by the planning department, but it wasn't in the uh, the newspapers yet. You know, pretty small town, they, and the news hadn't gotten out. And I went to my my family. I said, "Look, we're going to buy this piece of dirt, and Home Depot is going to come in, and Lowe's is going to come in, and Walmart's going to come in, and this is going to be the next hot spot." And they all said, "You're crazy. There's no way, right? Good good luck. Why don't you go back and teach band?" And because I didn't have the self-confidence to know what I was talking about, I didn't have the team to back me up. I didn't know how to sell my story. I let the deal go and, you know, roll forward 10 years. And what I thought happened was going to happen, right? All the businesses came in and this piece of land is easily worth between 770 and maybe $1.2 million for that pad site right on the freeway. Uh, in Southern California with all that development going on. So if I had purchased that property and done nothing else but sat on it for 10 years, I would have made 142% annualized return. But because I didn't know how to put partnerships together back then, I let the deal go. And it's the deal that got away. And what I've learned through, uh, through studying human psychology is people oftentimes regret the decisions and the deals that they didn't do a lot more than the deals that they did do, right? I've done deals that uh, went bad, that, that didn't make money. And I don't hold on to that baggage nearly as much as the deal that got away, right? This is the fish, the winning ticket that I knew was going to win. And I didn't, uh, I didn't buy it because I didn't know how, right? And so I let that lesson really stimulate me into forming partnerships. So I went out and I bought a bunch of houses in Lake Elsinore um, that I could do on my own. And I started asking people, would you partner with me? Most of them said no. They, they, they wouldn't partner with me. I didn't have a track record. I didn't know what I was doing. And in some senses, they were, they were kind of right. You know, I didn't have a lot of track record uh, back then. But I was able to get deals done and I was making money. And I started buying and selling uh, property when the market was on fire. And one of the properties that I bought or was in contract to buy was new construction. And in the nine months that it took the developer from the time they took my contract and my earnest money until the time they built the house, the price had gone up over $100,000 during that escrow period. And suddenly the developer decided not to sell it to me because they wanted to sell it at the full market value rather than our contract price. And that's when I went to Jeff Lerman and I said, look, Jeff, I've got a problem. The seller wants to back out of their contract and I need your help litigating this uh, or negotiating this particular opportunity. And that was the first real partner that I brought on and partner in a team sense, right? I, I was just a client of Jeff's. But I needed that skill set, and I brought on Jeff, and we, we filed a lawsuit. And uh, you know, as a as a big you know, kudos to Jeff. We got our lawsuit settled. We didn't have to go to trial, and it was a settlement that I was happy uh, happy with as a client. And the, the process is, was a great uh, experience going through uh, with Jeff on my team. So, one of the important things that I got from that early relationship with Jeff is he said. David, notice that you've done a lot of deals and you've been doing all these deals mostly with your own money. And if you had more money, you could probably use that skill set to grow even faster. So if you find a good deal, bring it to me and I'll fund it. And that was so profound for me because suddenly I stopped worrying about the money and I started focusing on the deal. Because I knew if I had a deal, the money would arrive because I had a team, a support group around me that could provide the capital to the deal. 
and some brains, right? I can go to a resource like Jeff and Jeff can help me put my partnership together. And that was a very powerful moment. So, and, and, and let me interject something there right at that point. You know, from, from my side of that conversation, you're, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about what we all are missing uh, that a partner might be able to bring to the table. Uh, I am a full-time practicing lawyer and I invest on the side. And my biggest uh, need is somebody who uh, has the time and the skills to find good deals. Good deals are hard to find. And so um, from my standpoint in, in that situation, um, you know, that is what the right partner brought to uh, brought to the table for me. And so what we're going to be we're going to be talking a lot about this concept, but I just want uh, everybody listening to understand, you know, you look at the partner on the other side and you need to ask yourself what why do they need me? And um, you need to understand the answer to that question uh, because every good partnership in order to survive requires what I like to call glue, something that holds you together. And if you cannot identify and understand the glue that's holding you together with uh, your partners, mm -hmm. then that's going to be a potential red flag for the future of that relationship. David, go ahead. So I'm really grateful to Jeff because when he gave me that type of uh, momentum, I started looking at bigger deals. And so I found this 30 unit apartment complex in 2005, remember the peak of the market. And I said, I can buy this as apartments, convert it to condominiums, do a major rehab on this property and sell them as condominiums. And I didn't have the money to do this. I mean, I, I just quit my job teaching high school band. Uh, I'd made enough money flipping houses and buying rental property that I didn't need to have a job anymore. And so I had the time, the freedom of time to go do a big deal. And for a lot of people, when they're looking at financial independence, it's not that you have to go make millions and millions of dollars. You just have to get enough money to cover your expenses. That gives you the freedom of time to go do whatever you want. And in that particular case, what I wanted to do with my time was bigger deals. I, I just like doing real estate. So I found this great apartment building in Vallejo, California, which is a suburb of San Francisco, uh, of San Francisco. And uh, it was a very successful project. And so what I put together was I needed an equity partner. I needed a hard money lender. And then myself, I was the manager of the project. And I put together a construction team. And I really, by doing this project, learned um, how to do development, how to uh, sell, and, and to, to manage a, a big project like this. And so this is kind of like my, my first deal. And again, Jeff was a great advisor to me uh, through that, that process, both on a legal perspective and helping me with my entity creation, et cetera, uh, but also just as a, a, a business coach and mentor to give me some ideas about how I could uh, run my project a little bit better. Um, so here's some before and after pictures of what it looked like. It was ugly, and then I made it beautiful. That always feels good when you can take something ugly and make it beautiful. I uh, took that experience um, along with some other training and some, uh, some internships I did working for another developer, and I really took that process and started a major development company. So I, I, I took my business to Dallas, Fort Worth, and put together a partnership to form a home building company. And so it was a partnership between a developer, someone who knew how to build, someone who knew how to sell, and a capital partner. And then the entrepreneur is that glue Jeff was talking about. It's the person that holds the, all of the people to, together, and it gives a reason, a motivation for all of the different partners to work in synergy, right? And so that was a great partnership uh, to put together. Then I took that concept and I learned about real estate syndication where uh, you can get lots of investors together. Instead of just one equity partner, you can get multiple equity partners together. I found this distressed strip mall and it was a great anchor tenant, but the rest of the center was vacant. And so I had construction experience. 
I had leasing experience, commercial property management experience. And so I found a partner to bring the debt and I found a bunch of partners to bring the equity. We bought this property, leased it up and added a bunch of value to the strip mall and everybody wins, right? I get paid for my ex construction, leasing and management experience. The equity partner made some money and the person who signed a personal guarantee on the loan, they also made uh, a profit for doing that. We all needed each other. Here's another example of a partnership, which is a partnership between a physician, a developer, and a cash partner. So I started with a client of mine who was a physician, and he really wanted to own his own uh, building or a larger building than the one he was in. And instead of going to just to buy the amount of property he needed, we talked about he could create value for his own practice by buying a much bigger building and leasing out those spaces to his doctor friends. And so he had a specialty that I didn't have, which is how to lease to doctors. And he had all the relationships in the local market to fill the building. What he needed was some cash to go buy a much bigger building than he could buy on his own. And we both wanted to take on uh, a partner who had a lot of construction management experience. And so the three of us kind of put together a deal. I went out and, and raised the cash for the deal and put together a great partnership to go do this project. And it's been very, uh, very lucrative project because I've had great partners. Um, what was great when I first started um, as an investor, I went to, to, Amazon, to uh, Borders and I bought this book, ABCs of Real Estate Investing by Ken McElroy. And it's just an amazing transformation because that was the first book on real estate investing I ever read. And before I read that book, I really had no clue about real estate investing. And that um, was a great, you know, where I started from was buying the book off the shelf to, you know, I, the last two years, I've been fortunate enough to actually teach uh, on a panel with the author uh, of that book, Ken McElroy, and developed a great mentoring, uh, personal mentoring relationship with Ken. He's just a great, great guy. And also I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which many of you have read in that was a great beginning for me, but it also got me into um, the, the mindset of investing, became a successful investor developer, and that opened the opportunity for me to, to uh, teach at a, uh, an event, to be on the faculty at an event with Robert Kiyosaki. And just amazing when you open your ideas to what's possible for your life, um, anything can happen. Anything can happen if you are willing to work for it and to see see what's possible. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on out there right now. And and um, even though this is we're, we're going to get into some more harder content in a couple of minutes, we wanted to spend this first few minutes with David and 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 the next couple of minutes talking about his experiences, so uh, you understand why it is so critical that you uh, decide that the partnership strategy is one that makes sense for you and then give you some additional reasons why we think it makes sense for you to be taking action right now because education without action is next to useless and what our objective is for all those listening here is to uh, help you to uh, take action and if you've been sitting on the sidelines for the last few years that's fine understandable but now's a great time let's let's talk about why uh, in the Wall Street Journal, this article showed up uh, just uh, just last month. Uh, why this may be the ideal time to buy real estate. The real estate sector, for the first time in years, is serving as a beacon of relative strength in an otherwise weak economy. Some of the world's smartest investors, including Warren Buffett, are taking notice, placing big bets on a continued recovery in the housing market. Most economists say the odds are good that real estate will be stronger over the next few years than it has been in the past few. That has caught the attention of many investors, including Mr. Buffett, who in February said he would buy, quote, a couple hundred thousand homes if it were practical. There is a great opportunity in actually buying residential homes directly for investors who have the capital. Prices are clearly turning the corner, and housing affordability is the highest in the generation. Then there was this from uh, Time, uh, which is, uh, has a website along with Moneyland, but it's all part of Time magazine why this may be the best, why this may be the ideal time to buy real estate. 
If you are thinking about making a move on a piece of property right now is possibly the best time. Although prices are still near 2003 levels, the signs of an impending resurgence are everywhere you look. For Americans who either have cash to buy or a credit score good enough to obtain a mortgage, there's still time to get a killer deal on real estate, but that window may be closing. If your finances can support it, now appears to be a great time to buy. And I wanted to quote those two articles for you because I've been doing this for over 30 years and uh, in my lifetime I don't think I've seen a better time nor do I think I will see a better time. Uh, it is unusual to get all the experts out there to agree on much but now what you're seeing is, and this is just a sampling, this is a representative sampling of what some of the thought leader publications are saying out there that uh, this is extraordinary. Uh, there's no dispute that we are coming um, at the tail end, hopefully, of a, um, a down economy and uh, whether there's going to be some further slip uh, in the economy, of course, nobody knows for sure, but uh, if it is a further slip, it's most experts agree, uh, it's going to be short-lived. We're, at, at this point, uh, pretty much coming out of the cycle. And so in the uh, conventional wisdom of buy low, sell high, uh, it's going to be difficult for you to find a better time to do that with uh, the least amount of risk. These two articles happen to talk about uh, buying single family because most of the people that David uh, uh, deals with and that I deal with, that's their gateway purchase when you get into real estate investment. And you can buy not just one, but you can buy many uh, single family homes as a way to build your portfolio. It's a great way to do it, and um, but it's not the only type of real estate that is doing well. Uh, real estate in general, depending on the geographic market and the particular product type, is going through a tremendous resurgence, and so if not now, when? That is the question. What's holding you back from taking advantage of what could be the best time in our lives to invest. David? Rents are going up. Prices are at all-time lows. Interest rates are at all-time lows. And the government is blatantly saying they're trying to create inflation through economic stimulus. I can't imagine a better environment to get into the market and to get long-term fixed interest rate debts that are uh, producing positive results for you. You can borrow money at 4% and go invest it at 6% or 8% or better and make that uh, spread, right? It's such that's a called, That's called positive leverage. Anytime you can get that kind of positive leverage where the, the return is greater than the interest rate, that is, uh, again, uh, very significant. There have been a lot of times over the last 30 years, again, that I've been in the business where that has not uh, has not been the case, and it's tougher to make a buck then. But um, right now, as David points out, that's a very significant um, uh, convergence of trends. And it's so obvious that it's time to buy, but not everyone is buying. And so you have to ask yourself, why? What's holding you back from playing in the game? Is it money? Is it time? Is it your skills, your team? Is your credit not working? Can you not get financing? Don't, do you not have deals? What is it? So we thought we would take the opportunity to uh, poll our audience. Um, what do you think is holding you back from acquiring more investment real estate? So why don't you just take a moment, click on your screen. What You can click more than one. Which of those things is holding you back from getting into the game? It's the best buyer's market ever. What are you missing? And the obvious answer is, is once you've identified what you, you're missing, uh, you can decide uh, where to go focus on your partnerships. So we're going to take uh, two more seconds and close that poll, get your clicks in, and let's see what people say. Uh, it looks like most people are missing cash or the ability to get financing. And as someone who started as a high school band director with no cash, and very limited ability to get financing, those are two awesome uh, gifts that I started out with because I never let the lack of cash or the lack of credit get in my way of doing deals. And 
the people that start with cash are actually, I think, at a huge disadvantage because they're dependent upon their own cash as, as a crutch. So at the end of this call, when we talk about uh, a great opportunity to take action, we're going to give you some ideas on how to get over these types of limiting factors. And many times it's a limiting belief, right? Maybe you just believe that you can't get into real estate if you don't have cash or you can't find good deals because you don't have the time to find them or whatever. Like Jeff does, he leverages his relationships to make sure that other people can bring time and knowledge and deals so that he can leverage his uh, investment strengths in partnership with other people. So what's holding you back? Uh, when I was moving from high school band director to developer syndicator, what I really needed was uh, an idea. I didn't know that it was possible. No one ever taught me in school that you can do large real estate deals or even small real estate deals without your own money and your own, own credit. And when Jeff planted that seed in my brain that that was possible, the next thing that I needed was to really believe that that was true. And the best way to build confidence is repeated positive experience. And I was very fortunate early in my um, investment career to get some partners that had a lot of experience. And then I could leverage their experience and their credibility and say, well, I know that I don't know it all, but I'm working with so and such, such and such a partner and they're the experienced one. The other thing is just taking advantage of all the real estate investor training that's out there. When I started, YouTube didn't exist. Now you go on YouTube and you type in any subject in the world that you want, and someone's got a video up there on it. There's tons of people like Jeff that have created some fantastic educational training products that you can buy for just a fraction of what they're really worth, right? If you can get a, a program that will help you make millions of dollars, and why would you not take advantage of that training? The other thing is building your team and building relationships of people that can help you do a deal. And that's really what my brand, Hassle Free Cash Flow Investing, is about. It's really helping taking you through the idea, the confidence, the training into building your team and then executing into a plan of action um, is really what it's about. Moving people from everyday working people to creating financial independence through, through real estate. Yeah. So the uh, solution, as we've been suggesting for the last uh, half hour, is to partner your way to profits. And uh, let's just talk for a couple more minutes about some of the benefits and uh, reasons that the partnership strategy really does work. Number one, uh, you can make so much more in profits. Again, David's as uh, good a case study as anybody. If you're a one-man band doing it all by yourself, there's going to be a limit as to how much money you've got, how much time you have, how many deals you can look at. If you can leverage off uh, partners, uh, time, money, and effort, then you can make exponentially more profits and the case studies out there are limitless. Diversification. If you've got all your eggs in one basket, if you have all your resources in one investment, you are not diversified. If that investment fails, then you've lost everything. If you leverage your uh, nest egg, if you will, the financial resources that you have, and instead of putting it all into one deal that you control, then you're going to be much worse uh, positioned than if you use those resources uh, to seed other deals, seed multiple deals. Instead of putting it all in one deal, use it as seed money for 10 deals, and then um, repeat You know, once those deals come to fruition. Growth. Uh, you can grow your portfolio instead of, again, just doing one or two deals, do 10 or 20. And the only way to do that really is uh, with, with an effective partner strategy. Time. Again, I'll use myself as the best case study. I've only got so many hours in the day. If I've got somebody like David, uh, who I've got a relationship with, who uh, has, uh, he may have more time, less money, and he's got his skill sets, that is a huge value to me. It's, it's, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's just as valuable as, uh, as the dollar. Fun. I will tell you that if you have the right partner, then uh, that adds an element of fun to a business that can 
otherwise be sometimes kind of lonely. Uh, the, the, the life of an investor on his own, uh, it, it's just basically you and your uh, computer screen. But if you've got somebody else that you really do have some glue with, then hopefully it's more than business and there's a connection there. And that connection, that human element, uh, does make the whole process more rewarding, or it should. Accountability is also so important. It's human nature that if we only have ourselves to account to, that we are more likely not to stick to our goals or our deadlines. But if you've got a partner that you have committed to, and you say, you know what, each week we're going to meet and we're going to report back to each other as to how our progress is on our respective duties and responsibilities, that will hold you to a whole, in, uh, a whole other type and level of accountability that will translate into more accomplishments. And again, it bears repeating, you know, profits. You do all this and you put all this together, right, and you will get more profits. Now, um, there are other ways to do it, but I do think that there is no strategy that is cheaper, uh, easier, faster, or safer than doing it through using partnerships. And I use that uh, acronym as the chef's method because that is my personal philosophy that I use to approach virtually everything that I do both uh, for my own business and also for my clients. Uh, you know, I believe that everybody is looking for the cheapest, easiest, fastest, and safest way to accomplish their outcome. And so that is what uh, I do for myself. That's what I try to do for my clients, and I think partnerships is the way to do it. So I do firmly believe that partnerships are your key to success when you are trying to get involved in this real estate investing business. When you understand the power of the strategy, and you heard David say it, uh, you start opening up to a whole new world of possibilities, and you feel like a kid in a candy store, where all of a sudden you see all these options and opportunities, whereas before you just saw limitations. And that is the power of this kind of a strategy. Let's talk about a couple of the case studies to give you some examples of what's possible uh, with the partnership structure. And then we're going to talk about some of the, some of the things you need to be um, uh, careful about as you put these together and some of the steps that are important to minimize your disputes and stay out of court. Uh, so the, uh, a basic structure for real estate with two partners is uh, uh, there are usually four components to any deal. Uh, the deal itself, the time to find the deal, the time to manage the deal, the money for the down payment, and the credit to get the loan. Those are, there might be other variations, there might be additional ones, but uh, broadly, generally speaking, those are the four key components to any real estate partnership. And so here's sort of a traditional structure where uh, this gentleman over here may have found the deal and he may have the time, and then uh, this partner over here may have the money and may have better credit so, that, uh, so she can get the loan, and then together uh, they form an LLC, which is important from an asset protection standpoint, which is a seminar uh, on its own, and we can do that on another day, but you do have to be mindful of the asset protection. And then the LLC ends up holding the property, and uh, that is sort of a uh, bread and butter joint venture deal that uh, partners can, can work with. Here's another way that partners might work together, a little creative financing, where this partner may have uh, some money but bad credit, and so what this partner does is this partner gets the loan, uses their good credit to get the loan, but doesn't come up with the down payment, and title goes into their name, and then after the close of escrow, then the if this is a single family, then the, the property might get transferred into the LLC, again, for asset protection purposes. There's another creative structuring, I'm sorry, creative um, financing, seller creative financing uh, structure, where perhaps uh, this partner um, has the, the money to ultimately buy the property, uh, but this partner, but they don't have the credit, so this partner again uh, buys the property, gets the loan, and then sells it to this buyer uh, with this great uh, very low interest rate financing uh, and sells it either subject to this great loan or if it's really that great a loan that uh, perhaps do something called wraparound financing 
where uh, there might be, in addition to taking subject to the existing, perhaps there's uh, another profit center that this partner over here can realize by actually uh, getting this partner to pay a little bit higher interest rate on top of whatever that lower interest rate is. And um, that is just a couple, that, those are just a couple uh, creative financing techniques where a, a partnership might uh, play a role. Uh, when you do form partnerships to buy, uh, what you need to be careful of is uh, when you have when you have a partner, and the and the example is even more um, clear when you have multiple more than two partners. At some point, you may have created a security where uh, one or more of your partners are what's called passive in the eyes of the securities laws, where basically all they're doing is writing you a check. And you are, and they're relying upon your services to make a profit for them. And at that point, you have created a security, and you are subject to the federal and state securities laws. Again, that's a whole other seminar, and actually a whole boot camp that uh, I've, I, I have taught in the past and have available in a home study course version. But that's a whole other issue. David's mentioned syndication. This is the syndication issue. You need to know this. You need to know when you are setting up your partnership what you need to do to make sure you are you have not inadvertently uh, gotten caught up in the web of securities laws out there and how you can avoid them. You can avoid them, but you need to know what to do. Some of the more common partnering pitfalls that I see, because yeah, we've been talking about how great this is and all the all the reasons why it's it's uh, it's good to do. But like anything else, it does have potential dangers to it. Some of the more common partnering pitfalls that I see come through my office is partnerships where there has been no written agreement whatsoever created, or there might be an agreement that was written by a non-lawyer, usually by one uh, of the two partners who uh, tried it on the back of a napkin or went online and tried to find some form and tried to do it themselves. and uh, those never work. Uh, or it could be an agreement that was actually written by a lawyer, but a lawyer who is inexperienced. I've dealt with a multi-million dollar uh, dispute lawsuit where the uh, the parties had a written agreement, but it was written by a lawyer who was, th this was outside his comfort zone, and he didn't even realize it, or if he did realize it, he just said, uh, you know, I, uh, let, let's just do it anyway. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is that that written agreement uh, had the seeds of what grew into a lawsuit. Uh, there are situations where we have partners doing business before they actually have any written or oral agreement whatsoever. And they just get caught up in the excitement of the possibility of the deal and they just go forward and start acting as if uh, without any oral agreement. And, they're, um, what we, and those are all front end issues, but what we also see happening quite frequently in partnerships is a communication breakdown. And a partnership is like a business marriage. And if the communications break down, if one partner goes dark on the other, then that is a huge red flag that could be a warning sign that you're headed for a lawsuit with your partner. Uh, I'm going to skip over the details of this real world case study because we're short on time and we want to we're going to end this thing at, at, at uh, right on the, at the top of the hour. But suffice it to say that this is a, 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 a lawsuit that I was involved with for one of my clients. Two partners, three real estate development joint ventures that lasted over 10 years, multi-million dollar dispute, and uh, involved issues of how additional capital infusion should be characterized, whether it should be loans or capital contributions. And uh, the, all of these problems and this dispute could have been avoided if these people had just learned the lessons that you are learning right now and that you're going to have the opportunity to learn more of at the end of this call. Some of the more common joint venture disputes are a breach of fiduciary duty. Somebody feels the other partner has somehow acted in bad faith or violated uh, loyalty, they stole a deal that should have belonged to both of them, things like that. Uh, whether a partner has fulfilled their promise commitments of time, money, or effort, uh, you want to expel a partner for being uh, a deadbeat partner, so to speak. 
Um, the buyout amount for uh, when you want to exit early, how much should one partner pay to another partner to exit the deal early. Other uh, most common joint venture disputes are involve profit and loss allocation distributions, admitting new partners, adding somebody else to this uh, very important relationship, reallocations of profits due to change circumstances. This is a huge area of um, activity, especially over the last five, six, seven years when the economy has been going through what it's been going through because people's circumstances have changed. And so a, one partner has had to come up with more money than they thought they should and that they were obligated to. And now they need to fight about, okay, how should that affect the profit allocations? And unauthorized acts. This is just a sampling of some of the more common ones. There are others. So um, let's talk about a couple of a bigger topic that we're, uh, we talk about uh, in more detail in the uh, course we're going to be talking about at the end of this. Um, that steps that you need to take, everybody needs to take in order to set up the, a partnership that works and stay out of court. Point number two out of a 17 point uh, set of uh, lessons is what is the best form of partnership for you and your partner? Is it a general partnership which is almost never the case because of the uh, full liability of the general partners or should it be more likely a limited partnership or a limited liability company? Those are the two most common ones, a limited partnership or a limited liability company. It could be a corporation, but that's more rare. And uh, then if it is going to be a limited liability company or a limited partnership, consider whether you need to do a tenancy in common instead of a joint entity because the advantage of owning as tenants in common is it allows the partners or the members in the liability company, the joint venturers, to make different choices regarding a 1031 exchange on the exit. If you're in an LLC, for example, you are joined at the hip and you both have to do the exact same thing when you exit vis-a-vis -vis a 1031 exchange. If you want to preserve your flexibility at the back end of your deal, then perhaps you want to do a TIC instead. And if you are considering a TIC, then each individual tenant in common needs to confront the entity question from an asset protection standpoint. Asset protection. Again, I don't want that point to get lost. You have to, these, these issues go hand in hand. Point number 11 in our teaching points in the bigger course is what if more money is needed? And again, a very timely topic in this economy and one that many people don't talk about because it's uncomfortable. Um, so what if more money is needed? Is it going to be required or is it going to be voluntary for the partners to come up with more money? And if you do put in language in your agreement that does require you to come up with cash calls, more money, you got to be careful because there's a right and wrong way to include that language if you get sued by somebody else who becomes a third party creditor then that third party creditor could through a series of events that are too lengthy to talk about in this call could actually go to court and uh, ask the court to order you to actually put up more money in order to satisfy that creditor's claim or judgment so again you need a lawyer to walk you through this if a cash call is going to be required who's going to decide it's required and how much What's going to be the procedure for that decision? What's going to be the timing? How long will you have to put up that money? What will the consequences be if there is a cash call default? Will there be a loan that is going to be made by the partner who's got the money? And if so, is that loan going to be made to the entity or is it going to be made to the partner who's short on cash? What are going to be the terms of that loan? At what point should there be a dilution or a reduction of that partner's interests who has not put in as much money as the other partner? And at what point should the venture be terminated? What's the fail safe? You know, you want to set, you want to discuss that and agree upon that up front when you're still friends and the relationship is at its best and not wait and put that off to the point when the crisis has hit and both of you are in a direct adversarial position with each other. And uh, what you want to do is, is consider a representation and warranty regarding your respective financial positions 
uh, at this at, at the beginning. So if it turns out that uh, there is a problem down the road, then uh, you, the person who uh, does have the greater financial resources, may have a claim for fraud against the other person. If it turns out they misrepresented, and if the um, if the if the other partner does end up filing for bankruptcy. It's important to have that fraud claim because that fraud claim would be non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. So, important things to understand. And again, uh, the key in all of this is to come up ultimately with the right partnership agreement, whether it's an LLC or a limited partnership. The right agreement. Reduce your agreement to a writing that is done correctly and accurately reflects your uh, your understanding and covers all the important points. Now this is just a taste of uh, the bigger course that I've done uh, because we just don't have the time to cover it all. There are at least 15 other key questions every investor must discuss with their future partner before entering a joint venture or else. And what I mean by or else is I am a litigator as well as a transactional lawyer. I have seen deals come together. I have seen them fall apart. I've been brought in when they've fallen apart. I am here to tell you, and hear me very clearly on this, these disputes can be some of the most expensive disputes to litigate in terms of attorney's fees, and they can be the most uh, high stakes disputes you're going to see out there. We're talking about potentially millions of dollars, and it will consume your life, it will be a major distraction. Uh, the pain that you will encounter if you find yourself stuck in one of these disputes is profound and so you really need to set yourself up right from the beginning in order to minimize the risk that you end up in one of these disputes and so what we uh, would like to offer to you and please stick around for the next few minutes because we're going to explain why this offer makes a lot of sense for you to consider and take advantage of and take advantage of right now because you get we're going to give you an ethical bribe, if you will, an incentive, a reward for uh, taking action. I did do a course uh, that was, that actually lasted for a couple of days at four and a half hours, and I put together a great faculty called Partnering for Profit, and um, we go through all of what we talked about and so much more. This has just been a, a taste of the... Um, of what we cover in this course. The cost of the course is $147 and uh, some of what you will learn uh, in this course is how to find just the right strategic partner to meet your needs, how to convert your properties from problems into profits. A lot of you have properties already and your problem is, isn't that you're trying to buy more property, you're trying to make what you have work better. You can use partnerships to do that. Uh, avoid foreclosure, same thing. Avoid bankruptcy, same thing. Save your credit, same thing. You can use partnerships to save what you already have. Or you can use it to find great investments, invest without worrying about getting financing, invest with bad credit, position yourself for incredible returns, and we're going to teach you how to use your self-directed IRA funds to invest with a partner. Again, this opens up a whole world of possibilities that a lot of you uh, may not know about and certainly don't know enough about to, to understand where the pitfalls are. We're also going to go into a lot more depth on the most common mistakes and how to avoid them. And essential techniques every investor must know when dealing with partners, including how to protect yourself from your partner's problems, including potential future bankruptcy, again, very important and timely. Alternative structures for your joint venture. The structures are actually limited only by your own creativity. And this is, again, one of David's great gifts is that he's got uh, an eye and uh, a, a brain for uh, detecting uh, structures that uh, I just sit back sometimes and marvel at some of the innovation that he brings to a problem solving uh, session. And so uh, I think that if you can get David to help you in that respect, uh, it's it's just phenomenal for you to get you to your next level. How to minimize partner disputes and stay out of court. How to document your deal. How to protect yourself from the deadbeat partner. How to avoid the securities laws completely. Now, this is not going to be a, sem a seminar on syndication. That's a, that's another course. This is how to avoid the securities laws completely. 
and uh, so much more. And this course also includes a joint venture agreement form that you can use. It's in Word format, so you can uh, use to help you to get started in documenting your joint venture agreement, your arrangement with a prospective partner. I will tell you, it's a, it, this will save you a lot of money even if you work with me, but I will also caution you, you must, you must, you must have a lawyer review the final document before you actually use it. This will save you money in the process, but uh, it's an agreement, there's legal consequences to it, and so whether it's using me or use somebody else, you need to have a lawyer look at a legal document before you go with it. A couple of quick testimonials from that event that we did. Uh, Sky Kim of San Jose wrote, Jeff Lerman was great, his information is clear, precise, and organized. And Jamie Sun Wishart of Petaluma writes, the speakers, all well-informed experts in their fields, gave us the outline and steps to take ourselves to a higher plane as investors and as real estate professionals to also counsel our clients, friends, families, to empower them to discover new ways to create and share wealth. Let me uh, ask you just a moment. The, uh, I, I've heard Jeff speak on no, numerous occasions, and his his home study courses are fantastic. I would not be where I am today if it weren't for the educational exposure that I've had to the ideas that Jeff teaches. And thank you, David. Uh, give a higher uh, testimonial than, than to what Jeff has to offer. Appreciate that. Uh, so the speakers for the course are myself. I cover the legal aspects. Tom Anderson, who is the CEO and founder, I should say co uh, uh, former founder, because Tom has since sold Pensco, but he did found. Uh, he was the founder of the company, and uh, he talked on the uh, IRA issues. Steve Moskowitz, who is a CPA and also a tax lawyer, he talked about the tax aspects of partnerships. Again. This is a business relationship. You have to understand the tax consequences of whatever business structure you do in real estate. And Robert Helms, who's a syndicator, and uh, you may recognize him, he's on the radio. He's been on the radio for at least eight or nine years with the real estate guys, and he's been on TV. And uh, he has uh, he has been a client in the past, and uh, he is a very um, a very prolific syndicator, and he talked in the course a lot about the uh, business aspects of syndication. So the agenda that we cover broad strokes in that four and a half hour course is we go through the business of partnerships, the business issues, the legal issues, the tax issues, using your IRA, 1031 exchanges, and then there was extensive Q&A from people who attended that uh, webinar. We are going to give a couple bonuses to uh, again, incentivize and reward those of you who take action. I will tell you that if you, if this sounds like it might be interesting and you say, I'll think about it, I will tell you human nature is that if you leave the point of this decision uh, without making a decision uh, and saying, I'll think about it, then you've made the decision not to take action and uh, nine times out of ten, you'll get busy with your life, you'll get busy with other things and you will not you will not take action. So recognizing that, we want, again, to um, incentivize and reward those of you who said, you know what, this is interesting. I think the time is right. It's time to do something, and we're going to go forward. So the first bonus is I'm going to give every the, the first 10 people who do take advantage of this uh, a free 15-minute legal consult on your partnership matter, whether it's putting a partnership together or if you're in a partnership dispute. Uh, then I'll be happy to talk to you about that, however you would like to use your 15 minutes. Uh, that is, uh, has a value of approximately $120 uh, for that 15-minute uh, consult. David, uh, you've got another bonus that you want to uh, explain. Uh, if you are one of the first 10 people to take advantage of this opportunity, you're ready to take action, um, I'm offering a 30-minute strategy consultation to really help you put the information that you learn in this course into action, really help you develop your relationships with investor partners, best practices for investor relations, how to find and evaluate deals that are conducive to putting together partnerships, how to divide the benefits and put together a waterfall structure between you and your partners, what's the marketplace is accepting and is fair right now, how to make more profit with, uh, with less risk involved, and how to get out of the rat race forming partnerships. 
And uh, that uh, bonus number two is included for the first 10 people who take advantage of our uh, this home study course. So there's a value there of 150. Um, the, uh, I know how good this course is. I know how good it is because I created it and I take a lot of pride in what I do and I really uh, try to design the course that I would want to uh, listen to if I didn't know anything about this subject and uh, I load it up with content. I know how good it is and I know that the people that attended it, uh, how much they appreciated it. So uh, I understand that you don't and uh, so I don't expect you to take that risk. I will assume 100% of the risk of this course. So I sell it with 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you're not satisfied for any reason, simply notify us within 30 days after your receipt of the course and we'll give you 100% refund, no questions asked. This, isn't a con this does not constitute a guarantee a warranty or a prediction regarding your results. That's up to you. This is only a guarantee that you will be satisfied with the content of this educational product. So let's uh, review quickly here why this we think it's, it makes sense for you to take advantage of this offer. Number one, you get your 15-minute legal consult for 120. That's uh, worth 120. Your action plan brainstorming session with David. That's worth 150 a joint venture agreement form uh, that is worth at least a thousand dollars four and a half hours with experts if you were going to pay uh, to spend this time with these experts it would cost you at least sixteen hundred dollars uh, what it's worth just in terms of all of that is two thousand eight seventy but again I got to tell you something um, if this keeps you out of one dispute you can add uh, a, a couple zeros to that what it's worth column because if it helps you avoid a dispute then th that's what it's worth that's really what it's worth uh, this course may be tax deductible consult your tax advisor but it's uh, educational uh, in the business area of real estate so it, 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 it we believe it, it, it may very well be tax deductible uh, plus it's 100 percent guaranteed so you've got really zero risk and uh, if you would like to uh, be one of the first 10 to get those bonuses, David, why don't you tell them how to do that? So at the bottom of the screen here, you see the, uh, the URL. You're also going to be emailed this URL as a follow-up to this particular um, event. You're going to get an email. So once you put that email into your, your browser, you're going to get to this page here. You click on the uh, – there's going to be a video of today's event. So if you want to watch the replay, that video is going to be posted here when it's available. Also, you can download the slides from today's presentation on this website. But the most important thing is there's a link here, Partnering for Profit Home Study Course. You click on that link, it's going to take you to this uh, landing page where you can then click to purchase uh, the course for $147. Um, using this special link through our site, we'll know who the first 10, um, 10 people are so they can get those special bonuses. Uh, if you do have questions for our faculty, uh, jeff at lermanlaw.com. You can reach Jeff directly, david at hasslefreecashflowinvesting.com. You can wait for that follow-up email, but if you really want to be the first 10 people, you can copy down that URL, hasslefreecashflowinvesting.com slash video slash partnering dash for dash profit. I know it's kind of long, you can also, uh, we're going to leave this screen uh, image up on the screen for a while and you can uh, write it down. Thank you all for attending. It was Well, David, before we say goodbye, I just want to remind people, you're going to get, when you do exit this, you're going to get, I believe, an auto, uh, an automatic um, uh, Correct. survey, survey that's going to, uh, where David's going to ask you for feedback on this event. And uh, believe me, I attend a lot of these, and I know usually that's the last thing you want to do is take a couple minutes and fill one of these things out. But uh, David and I would appreciate it if you would do that because this is uh, being recorded and it's going to be made available in the future to others just like you. And there is nothing, there is nothing that helps um, others decide if they want to invest their most limited resource, their time in uh, getting some sort of education, nothing more powerful than uh, a testimonial from a third party, social proof. And so if you could just take uh, one or two minutes and uh, give us feedback, even if it's negative, so we can improve 
for the next one, but hopefully uh, it'll be positive. And if it is going to be, um, if you're willing to allow David uh, to use your first and last name and your city and state in uh, the um, along with your testimonial, that would be even better because um, it adds even more credibility to those testimonials. So David and I would appreciate it if you would take that extra minute or two to complete that when you get it. And uh, David, thank you very much for allowing me to present this very important information to uh, to our good listeners. It's the most important information that people can get when they're looking at becoming financially independent, working with partners. Jeff, I'm so grateful for your time today. Uh, I'm sure that our listeners had a great, uh, got a lot of great information, and I really encourage you to dig even deeper uh, into the subject. And I wish you all much success. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.